I call Karen Mullen, the Deputy Chair of the Education Committee. I speak today on behalf of the Education Committee and firstly, like others, I want to extend our appreciation to our frontline staff and key workers, including our school leaders and staff. And I want to pass on condolences to the families of those who have already been bereaved. The Education Committee yesterday considered the relevant aspects of the coronavirus bill at an additional meeting at which a DE official was present, and we thank him for attending that meeting. As already has been said, these are ex extraordinary times, and consequently, the committee agreed to forgo the usual timescales and level of scrutiny for legis legislative consent, of consent motions. The bill prepares, permits the Department of Education to close schools and the Department of Health to close childcare settings. Indeed, both departments will also be able to provide directions to each kind of setting in order to permit them to provide continuing services for what the bill calls specified children. Some principals received clarifying correspondence from the Permanent Secretary of Education last week. I have to say that despite this, there is still a lack of clarity from the departments as to how arrangements in schools and childcare settings are going to work during this difficult time. Some principals have com communicated that they are unsure about the number of specified children that will be attending their school, and I'm aware of post-primary schools that opened yesterday with only one or two children attending. They are anxiously awaiting guidance on social distancing, protective measures and testing. The childcare sector has also highlighted the same concerns. It is our responsibility to ensure that guidance is clear and that our schools and childcare sector is supported and protected in the time ahead. Last can caller, the bill gives the department quite a lot of leeway in respect of examinations for GCSEs and A-levels. This is an other area where further explanation will certainly be required for schools, parents and young people. I think it is important to note that when the situation is resolved, it may then be op opportune to give consideration to our examination system. Last count, notwithstanding any of the concerns that I mentioned, the committee unanimously agreed to support the passage of the legislative consent motion in respect of the provisions linked to education and childcare. I therefore commend those to the House, and I would now like to add a few words as Sinn Féin Education Spokesperson. As members have already alluded to, these are truly extraordinary times. And in times like these, it is often necessary to throw protocol to one side and make uncomfortable decisions. That is what we are doing with this legislative consent motion here today. The experiences of countries around the world, but in particular, the experience of our friends in Italy in the last couple of weeks are stark examples of the heartbreak and the loss that this virus can bring. It is these experiences, along with our duty to protect our people, with influence, which influence our response to this pandemic. As my colleagues have said, we need the public to work with us and heed the advice and stay at home where possible. In normal circumstances, we in Sinn Féin would insist on the most effective and forensic scrutiny of legislation through the procedures available to us. Unfortunately, however, normality is not something we have the luxury of right now, and the absolute priority in the time ahead must be to save lives and protect communities. This is why we will be supporting the motion today. I finish with a quote from Seamus Heaney. If we want her this one out, we can summer anywhere. Thank you. I call Martina Anderson. I'll get a, a last count call you and I rise to uh, first of all send my heartfelt sympathy to, to the 10.